Hey everyone, greetings from Brno here in South Moravia in the Czech Republic. I hope everyone is still staying sane with this quarantine. I know I'm ready to bust out of here, go to a restaurant without a mask, of course, but um, you know, safety first. They are still taking precautions here to make sure everyone is safe and healthy and that no pandemic will re-arise here in the Czech Republic. But I'm here today to talk about wine, to bring a little bit of joy back into your life during this quarantine. And I'm gonna talk about a topic today that I've kind of neglected to mention in past videos, but it's an important one. And it's a movement that's really taken hold of the wine industry. And this is natural wine. So natural wine, or as I like to call it, minimal intervention winemaking or low intervention winemaking is kind of a, a throwback to some of the older traditions of winemaking that have been taking place for thousands of years. But for me, I do prefer calling it minimal intervention winemaking for a few reasons. Number one, I feel like there are winemakers who use a lot of natural winemaking practices but don't consider themselves natural winemakers. And second, I feel like wine is a natural product. It's a product of fermentation of grapes. Of course, there are a lot of things and components and chemicals that aid in that fermentation, but by calling it low intervention or minimal intervention winemaking, I feel like it's more defined and I feel like you know, these, these terms get thrown around all the time without any kind of benchmark or standard people can go by. But by referring it to it as low intervention or minimal intervention winemaking, I feel like the consumer is more aware of the practices taking place both in the vineyards and the cellar. But that being said, there are some really innovative things happening here in South Moravia. So, to talk a little bit about the country, just really briefly, this is a country that has a long tradition of winemaking. Since the Roman times in the 13th and 14th centuries, there has been wine and vines planted here and wine made here in South Moravia. However, what we would consider the bread and butter of South Moravia's wine industry really has only existed for the past maybe 30 years since the end of communism. So. Since the early 90s, winemaking and, and premium winemaking and private commercialized winemaking really has taken hold of this region. And thankfully, there are some fantastic young winemakers here who are pushing the envelope. They are breaking past those traditional barriers that confines them for so long, and they are returning back to these natural winemaking practices, these traditional winemaking practices using low intervention and minimal intervention techniques, both in the vineyard, the cellar, at the winery, even up to bottling. So one of them that I'm very excited to talk about today is Vina Herzanovi. Herzanovi, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, so I was actually introduced to the winemaker a few months ago, Jakob Herzan. And it was kind of serendipitous that I met them. So I was invited to Mendel University by my friend Mike to attend his wine English class. Now, Mike Maisie is a consultant winemaker here in the region, and he teaches English, but wine, specifically wine English, to winemakers, to those involved in the wine industry who are Czech or of foreign origin and he teaches them how to explain things using English terminology to explain wine. And so I was invited by Mike as kind of the sacrificial lamb because I am American and I use American English terminology, whereas Mike is from Australia and of course uses Australian or British wine terminology. And of course there are some correlations, but there are differences as well. And during this class, I was introduced to Jakob Herzan and his girlfriend, Sandy, both winemakers at the winery. And I was really curious to try their wines. Of course, after that class happened, which was, I think, in January, I ended up leaving town, going to Morocco for a few weeks with my mom. And then I came back and it was quarantine. So 
their winery and their wines kind of were put in the back of my mind, unfortunately, until I was scrolling through Instagram and I noticed that one of our mutual friends was visiting them and was tasting wine and I got really jealous. I wanted to try the wines too. And so I shot Sandy a message and said, hey, you know, I'd love to try your wines. She responded within minutes in perfect English, of course, and, um, you know, made the delivery to me a few weeks, uh, a few days ago. And I'm so excited to talk about their wines today. I really feel like these are the kinds of people in South Moravia who are going to be driving the industry forward. They are going to be marketing and, and pushing their wines out to the world. And I'm so excited to, to be here, to experience the wines and to be able to meet the winemakers. So talking a little bit about Vina Herzanovi, um, they are located in Koboli in Velke Pavlovica. The winery was started by Jakob's father in the late 90s. And since about 2012, Jakob and his girlfriend Sandy and Jakob's sister Susanna run the show. So Jakob is head winemaker, Susanna does sales and marketing, and Sandy assists both with things in English, in the winery. She's kind of the jack of all trades in terms of the, the uh, winery there. They farm four hectares of land. So this is a small operation. They make about 20,000 bottles a year. And they have recently, since 2016, they've recently converted to organic wine. Um, so organic farming practices, eliminating the use of pesticides, fungicides, herbicides in the vineyards and using these minimal intervention, low intervention, or natural winemaking techniques. So kind of going back to basics, if you will. Um, the wines I chose today are both Gruner Veltliner, as it's known here, Veltlinski Zelene. And the reason I did this is because I like showing contrast. I like showing how two grapes from the same vineyard plots, from the same vintage, can be so drastically different. And so these are both 2017 Vetlinski Zelene, but done in totally different styles. And I'm so thrilled to talk about them today. Uh, the first one I'm gonna be doing is their Black Label. This is their Vetlinski Zelene 2017. Now there's a lot to unpack with these wines, so I'll try to be as clear as I can. So this Gruner Vetliner was harvested, like I said, in 2017. So, this wine is fermented 100% in large old French oak barrels, specifically Francois Frère. So after the fermentation process is complete, half the juice goes to stainless steel, half of the juice remains in French old oak barrels for 11 months on the lees, on fine lees. So by maturing part of the wine on the lees, what that does, when lees break down into the wine, it's called autolysis, and it creates this added complexity into the wine. And by blending the two components, by having the stainless steel component blended with the wine, that does see lees maturation for 11 months in old French oak barrels, which is a pretty long time. By blending those two components, you keep the acidity and the freshness from stainless steel, but then you have this added complexity from the wine that saw uh, additional lees maturation. So really fascinating to, to try this wine today. It's so drastically different than a typical Austrian Gruner Veltliner, let's say, from Weinvertel. It has much more depth, much more concentration. Additionally, with this wine, there is a little bit of bentonite, which is added right before bottling, just to make sure that the wine is stable, that there's no long protein hazes in the wine. Additionally, there's a tiny, tiny bit of sulfur added right before bottling, just to preserve the freshness of the wine and to make sure that when you open it up, it will be good. Um, so going into the wine today, so this wine has a pretty dark color. The concentration is great on the color, medium yellow. There's a I want to say a slight green reflection, tiny, tiny bit, but this wine really is lemon yellow, um, as, as yellow as the tulip that's sitting next to me. And the nose on this is, is gorgeous. It has this yellow apple, kind of cooked pineapple note to it. But there's still that classic white pepper note. 
And I'm getting a little bit of that creaminess from the Lee's um, component of this wine. So there is that depth and like fresh baked bread. I mean, it's got this doughy note to it on the nose. But there's still yellow pear, yellow apple, a little bit of pineapple too. Great acidity. We call it medium plus acidity, medium plus concentration. Lots of yellow apple and yellow pear on the palate. But again, that little bit of doughiness is coming through too. The wine's really textured and really rich, specific, especially for a Gruner Veltliner, which can be really lean and mean and high acid. Um, this wine has a great length and a, a really pronounced yellow fruited character. But still, still vibrant. The, the acidity is, is there. It's not this pungent, really sharp acidity. I think that balance between the stainless steel and the Lee's maturation in old French oak really helped to create this unity between acid and texture and concentration. And this is a gastronomy wine. This is a food wine. I mean, I want just fried mushrooms or something like that with it. I think the saltiness um, would bring out the saline quality as well that I'm, I'm, I'm tasting on the palate. Delicious wine and, and such a varied expression of Gruner Veltliner that I wasn't expecting. Um, so this is delicious. And these, these guys are young. They've been making wine just a few years, but like I said, they are going to be pushing the envelope to, to the future. The next Gruner Veltliner, you've got to see the color on this. It's pretty red. Um, Gruner Veltliner typically has this color, this yellow, a little bit of green, maybe hue to it. This is Gruner Veltliner done in Clevery. So this is the first Clevery wine I'm showing on my video, and I'm excited to show Vina Herzanovi because I think they do it just right. So a little bit about Clevery. What is this Clevery? So Clevery is a terracotta clay vessel. I'm talking big. Thousands of liters can fit into these vessels. They vary in size, roughly 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 liters. So these are enormous vessels. They originated in Georgia 8,000 years ago. Um, and this is the throwback to tradition that I was talking about earlier, this return to tradition. So Georgia has been making wine, of course, for thousands of years. Traditionally, they're using Georgian grapes. They're using Arcetzicelli or Saparavi. However, here, these grapes are not available, so we're gonna roll with it and call it Gruner Veltliner Kvevri for today. Um, Vina Herzanovi, they have four Kvevri on their property right now, and they decide to ferment and mature their wine in Kvevri. Now, how this differs from traditional winemaking is that with the Kvevri, you're adding everything inside. You're adding the juice, you're adding the stems, the seeds, and the skins, things you would typically not include during a white wine uh, pressing or, or a white wine maturation. These are things you would typically discard or you know, use as a compost later in, in the vineyard, let's say. However, with Clevery, like I said, you're adding everything inside. So you're getting a lot more tannin. You're getting skin contact. You're getting the catechin tannin from the seeds. You're getting a lot of tannin, a lot of almost bitterness from all of these components that, like I said, typically are discarded. However, with their particular Clevery, Gruner Veltliner, Fetlinski Zelene 2017, they are adding all of the Gruner Veltliner juice, stems, seeds, skins, everything to their Clevery, and they let it ferment for nine months. It's a long, slow fermentation. After the fermentation is complete, like I said, nine months later, they are then taking that juice and putting it into large French old oak barrels, 400 liters to be exact. Now, the after a, quite a long time in barrel, I believe it's uh, 11 months in barrel that they are further maturing the wine, 
The wine is then bottled without sulfur, without fining, without filtration. Now, this is a pretty daring wine technique. I mean, typically a lot of winemakers add a little bit of sulfur before bottling. They'll add sulfur during uh, the must um, concentration. And they do that as a preventative measure. But like I said, by adding the skins, the stems, the seeds, you're already creating this protective barrier. So there's really no need to add that additional sulfur. So going into their 2017 Cveverie Fetlinski Zelene, this wine has a beautiful brown orange color. I mean, this looks like persimmons to me. It has, has a deep honey color to it. Um, almost leaning towards tawny. It's really got that golden tawny kind of edge to it. And the wine is cloudy. There's, like I said, no fining, no filtration on this wine. So you're gonna get that haze, it, that turbidity. You, you will see that in the wine. But a, a really floral, aromatic nose, really potpourri. Orange and tangerine. And hints of spice too, hints of cardamom and white pepper. A lots of honey note to it. Um, beeswax, nectar almost. And, and like orange sherbet. I mean, it's got this really deep tangerine, mandarin, orange note to it. And it almost has a sweet graham cracker note to it too. Um, a little doughy, not not as as fresh baked dough as the Velinsky Zelene. This is more more spiced dough, almost like a gingerbread. But tannic, still bright acidity. That's high acid. This is pretty acidic, but great tannin structure. I mean this. This stays on the stems and seeds and skins for nine months, so it's kind of inevitable you're gonna get tannin in these wines. But you're still getting a freshness. You're still getting fruit. I'm getting almost like a, a pithy orange, like when you are scraping in a grapefruit or scraping in an orange and you get a little bit of that skin, that's that little bit of pithiness I'm getting. Slightly bitter as well, but in a good way. Um, kind of a shaved walnut sensation on the palate, but lots of orange fruit, lots of, of floral components too on the palate. But spicy and, and so exciting and racy and just so interesting. Um, it's, not a, it's not sweet at all. This one is really bone dry, but showing a lot of that orange sensation and a little bit, like I said, that potpourri floral note on the palate too. Really juicy though, and great acidity. Just lovely, really incredible winemaking. Um, and it's interesting. So, you know, a lot of foreigners I know, they're buying wine from Italy and Spain and France. You've got to check out these Moravian wines. You can order right on their website. Like I said, Sandy comes to Brno at least once a week. So you can always just ping her order them. Um, these wines are just so interesting and so exciting for an, a country that is only 30 years into their privatization of the commercial wine industry. But like I said, the young winemakers here are pushing the envelope. They are creating and shaping these wines and, and making them for a more international market. So Hats off to you, Vina Herzanovi. You make gorgeous wine. And what a contrast between two Grunerwald leaners, same vintage, just done in totally different styles. Like I mentioned earlier, this one does see additional lees, maturation, and old oak barrels. This one sees Kvevri. This is fermented in Kvevri, traditional Georgian wine making technique. So, I'm constantly amazed at the innovation in South Moravia. And if you haven't been following me on Instagram or Facebook, I've been doing these great Moravia Makes Wine live chats with winemakers, with those involved in the wine industry. And I'm, I'm just so excited to see what this country has to offer in terms of wine. So stay tuned this week. I have some amazing interviews lined up. I'm so excited. 
and just follow me along on my on my wine journey here in Bernano during this awful quarantine. At least there's always wine at the end of the day. So that being said, cheers to Vina Herzanovi for making gorgeous, innovative, varietally driven wine. I think you're doing a fantastic job. I'm excited to try the others I, I ordered from you as well. So cheers from Bernano, cheers from South Moravia, cheers to Kvevri and Lee's maturation. I love these styles of wine. I think they're really neat. Cheers to low intervention winemaking at its best. I hope everyone enjoys the weekend. Cheers.